The lineups have been announced for Fiji Bighty versus Cook Islands Cookies. We're going to go through the lineups now and then head towards a prediction at the end of the video. So let's get started. Taking a look at the Fiji Bighty lineup in the backs, it includes Jareen Bula, Mike Sivo, Sunia Taruva, Wanga Blake, Michaeli Ravalawa, Kurt Donahoe, and Brandon Wakem. In the forwards is Tui Kamakamitha, Noah Naila Goliva, Gordon Whippy, Kitsioni Katoga, Tane Milne, and Caleb Navale. On the bench is Penioni Tagitu Imua, Api Salomi Sakuru, Watasoni Wakini Saravi, and Cirilo Lovakuru. On the reserves is Pio Seki. Taking a look at the team list for the Cook Islands, in the backs they have Esamai Oka, Malakai Morgan, Kale Ido, Alvin Mongati, Stephen Masters, Brad Tagarangi, and Essen Masters. In the forwards is David Moale, Rua Ngetakaru, William Samuel, Zaim Tetavano, Ruben Porter, and Pride Peterson Rabati. On the bench is Kadie Ioka, Reese Dakin, Justin Makareri, Takai Mokaha, and in the reserves is Isaiah Cooper Tetavano and Lucky Pokey Pokey. So I must say, before I get started, I hope and pray that these teams don't play again in the near future because reading those team lists from behind the scenes was an absolute mess. If you were sat right there, it would have sounded ridiculous, me going through it over and over and over again. But because it's been edited beautifully, you guys have no idea how much I messed up. And I will not be revealing that number, how many times I messed up. But getting onto the teams themselves, for me, it's very clear where the favourites are. That is Fiji. The back line looks incredible. I wasn't sure what's going to happen with Sonia Taruva. At centre, an unfamiliar position, so that's a possibility that, you know, Cook Islands could exploit that area. They've now had a game under their belt. They won't be as rusty. So maybe that's a specific area they can target. If Sonia Taruva is uncomfortable in that position, by all means, just go at him. But he is a very reliable player. I feel like you put him in whatever position, he's professional enough and he's got the work ethic to just get on with it. He might not be perfect as a centre, but I think he's going to do everything he can to learn in that position. But that back line is incredible. My only concern, like the only weak point there for me is, is Donahoe. I think that's how you pronounce it. Do educate me below if that's not how you pronounce it. That's my, my only visible weakness there in that lineup in the backs. You now, Bula has had an incredible season for the Tigers. Yes, it's been a poor team, but he's had a great season. And I think this is a great opportunity to watch him flourish. You know, Ravalawa and Sivo are incredible wingers, great finishers, not had the best seasons with their clubs. But Mike Asivo was still, I think, relatively high up. And even Ravalawa, they were both relatively high up on the try scoring list. So they could do a good job here this weekend. Could see at least multiple tries from both of them. But Sonia Taruva and Wanga Blake, both top players, this back line for Fiji is strong. It is really, really strong. And in the forwards especially, like, Fiji just always produce big guys. The Pacific Island Nations just always produce big guys. That's what they do. I think this is going to be a really interesting game. I, In my head right now, I see where it should be going. But for me, this could be very, very interesting. Taking a look at the Cook Islands team, there's been a couple changes. SM Masters has been moved from centre into the halves. For me, this is probably the right decision to make. He's a creative player that can do a lot of damage when he's aggressive with the ball. And putting it in the halves allows him to be a little bit more aggressive, I feel. You know, he is naturally more of a centre, I believe. But I think given the roster that is available for the Cook Islands, this makes the most sense to me. Would I have put Kale Ido at fullback? Possibly. I would have maybe done what I could to put the most creative players in the spine, but maybe I'm just underselling the players that are in those positions now. But I, again, I think in order to compete with Fiji, I think Fiji's going to have more speed and they're going to flow a little bit easier in the backs. So you've got to win that forward battle. You've got to win it. Now, they can absolutely do it. They've had a game under their belts. As I said, David Moale, I think, is a really underrated forward. He's had a great season with the Rabbitohs, I feel. So, seeing him or seeing him lead by example is going to be incredibly important. Only 20 years of age. So, we'll see what David Moale can do. But I, I'm looking at him as the guy in the forward pack. That's who I'm looking at. The final thing I'll say about this game is I think it could be won or lost on the game management of Brandon Wakem. 
and the ability to control the game. Now this backline for Fiji is strong enough to compete against anybody internationally I feel. It's a really strong and quick backline. But Brandon Wakeham, during the World Cup last year, took on the kicking responsibilities. Everyone was like, all right, Brandon, you have the ball. Do what you like with it. We'll just stand there. We'll look nice. We'll smash into people. You just do what you want to do, son. And he did. He controlled the game perfectly for all um, for all games that he played. He just ran things. So Fiji will be looking to him again to control everything. And... In order to manipulate the Cook Islands and get them to do what you want them to do, Brandon Wakeham is going to be the focal point for Fiji to make the Cook Islands do whatever Fiji want them to do. So you've got to put pressure on him as much as possible. Make him kick when he's not comfortable kicking. Put him on his backside a few times, not in late tackles, but you've got to make him fear kicking the ball. You've got to make him fear holding onto the ball because you don't want him running at the line starting plays getting things going you don't want him going for 4020s which i feel like he might have a few attempts at you know if the uh you know the fullback and the and the wingers aren't dropping enough and they aren't covering the sides there's a few 4020 attempts i can see in there for fiji but overall on the side of cook islands slow down brandon wakeham slow him down as much as possible and on the side of fiji is the forward pack really just needs to hammer into Cook Islands as much as possible, wear them down. Brandon Wakeham's early kicking game is going to be vastly important to the later kicking game. The more he can wear them down early and he can get some kicks early in the count, that just means that they're going to be chasing more. Cook Islands will be chasing after the ball more, wear themselves down, and therefore they won't have the energy to press onto Brandon Wakeham later. You guys all know this, but I'm just spitballing. So to head towards a prediction now for this game. Cook Islands have a game under their belts in this tournament, so they should be a little bit more free-flowing. Yes, there are some changes, but they should feel a little bit more comfortable with how they want to play. The rust is now away, hopefully at this point. Fiji, as a roster, look... They look good. They look really good. So I'm finding it difficult to go against Fiji. And I do kind of see it a little bit in the way that it it was for PNG versus Cook Islands, but given that Cook Islands have played a game, Fiji haven't yet, I would maybe make it a closer contest. So, in terms of a prediction, I'm going to go with Fiji 32, Cook Islands 16. So that's going to be it for this video. If you have any predictions, do let me know in the comments down below. Are there any changes you would make to the Fiji squad? Any changes you'd make to the Cook Island squad? Do also let me know in the comments down below. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.